It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Game Calls. Twisted Minds Bowstrings. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Antler Action. And Family Traditions Tree Stand. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. Hey, welcome back, everybody here at the ATA 2019. Another live stream from the PSE booth. Dan, is your feet sore yet? Uh, you know what? Surprisingly, they're getting there. Okay. All right. Well, this is day one, and uh, we've got Eric Springer from Hi, everybody. Stanislavski. Is that correct? Well, it's it's good. Close? Yeah, Stanislavski. Yep. Stanislavski. A year of releases. practice. Just call us Stan. It's Stan's. the easiest way to go. Stan's release, as you guys remember. You guys turned us on to these last year. Yeah. Uh, started shooting these. And actually, Danny and I shot our first uh, indoor league last Sunday. Last Sunday. Yeah. yeah. So, you, you, and you know what? I'll, I'll take that back a step further. Give you a quick year in review of, of becoming a Stan fan. And uh, I got I got it. It started started practicing with it. Yes, I did put one in the roof of a of a, of a shooting place. So yeah, uh, it, that's you haven't shot target archery if you haven't done that. <laughs> right, exactly. I had, to, I had to ask the guy, can you get a ladder because we have to pull it out of the, the ceiling, and he's like, okay. Well, the first week I started shooting, I did. I bought myself in the face Good. one time. Yeah, one yeah. time. So Any, every, like, everyone needs a little yeah. little scar. I got yeah. one too from back in the day. So. But we're here today talking with Eric. We get, you got something new for us this yeah. year to take a look at that you've got here at the ATA. And this is something new. Uh, other than the thumb, you're going back to a, a trigger something. Yeah, we've uh, we we wanted to be, be in the target or the hunting market for quite a while, but we didn't have a product that we felt was better than what was available, and so there was no point in doing it. And now we've got a system, a brand new, brand new one out there. We just applied for a patent, got prior approval for it. It's a brand new system. You end up with zero trigger travel. You know, if you shoot most trigger releases, you start to feel it, and then you feel it start to move away yep, from you a little bit. exactly. Then you want to snap it. You know, it kind of ruins your shot. This one, you just apply pressure to, and it's gone. I mean, just put pressure on it, squeeze a little harder, trigger doesn't move, and it's gone. We got it right there. Yeah. Well, here, we're going to come back to the tight shot. Go ahead and hold that up there, Eric. Hold that up. There you, there there you, go. There you go. There, that's it. It comes in two versions. you got a hard connection style or a, a strap connection, depending on your preference. And it, a couple other features about it. You know, that with, when you probably see people with some Band-Aids on their chin now and again, mm -hmm. that's because the hooks typically open on the inside. That's, that's the way a lot of them are designed. Okay. Ours were able to turn it so it opens on the outside. Okay. So you get a nice clean launch away from your face. It's not going to braid your skin. It's not going to rip your beard out or what have you. Right. I never thought about that. Yeah. That's... Uh, yeah, I like to keep my, my beard trim, but I don't want my release trim in my beard for me. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's got the convenience needed for for hunting, but it's got the precision for target. So okay. you can use it either way. When you fire it, it'll sit like this. Typically with a target release, like say yours, mm -hmm. you know when you got to go cock it, you got to press up. Well, let's see, okay. you got to press up like that. Mm -hmm. Well, let me cut back to that tight well, shot. Whatever you got. There you go. Yeah. So you see now I can close it. So I, right. I cock it. Then I can close it. Right. That's not really going to work in the woods. Plus, you hear all that noise. You right. Know, that's not. It's not in. With this one, you fired it to set it. It's just that. Just pull back on the trigger. Then to fire it, you pull back on the trigger. So the same motion does both setting it and firing it. And it, you can't just. You can set it as many times as you want. It's not. Not like you have to do one and then the other. Okay. Then you draw back your bow. Place your finger on the trigger and just pull harder and off it goes. That's awesome. All right, question time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I see you've got two styles here. You've got a buckle and a Velcro. Well, yeah, the strap. That Neither one of these are the strap that they come with. The strap it comes with is a buckle style only. Buckle style only, yeah, okay. We will not have the Velcro. Uh, our source for the, for the straps just yeah, it's the beginning of the year. Yeah, we, okay. we didn't get it. So these are like these are brand, brand, brand new. Yes, it's I mean, launched here at the show. Okay, that's right. So you're seeing it here first, folks. Yeah. Second question. 
-hmm. You've got one that's got uh, a web, and then you've got one that's got the hard The hard piece. connection. Is that just a preferential preference it is. of people? It is, you know, the, it's, the honey market, more often than not, people are going to have this, what they call the hard connection. It's, it's two pieces of aluminum threaded together, and they can spin apart to extend out from the, from the wrist strap. The honey market just seems to favor it. Target archery, you see more of the, the webbing style that you have there in your left hand. That's my personal preference, but it, you know, it's, neither one's more effective than the other. The strap, I think, just kind of gives you like a D-loop on that, the back of your bowstring, gives you a little bit of a forgiveness connection between you and uh, your wrist, okay. if you will. But this, there's no denying the, the convenience of this. It's always right there in your hand with the hard connection. Right, exactly. You can, you just, you it's just, always right there. You got that feel. It's just, yeah. It's, it's that feeling of good, it's, it's there. Yes. Not, where where yeah. is it? Yeah. yeah. You don't have to fight for it or look, look for it when the deer's coming in. Right. Okay, I'm seeing gray. Do, yeah. Do these come in different colors? No, actually they don't even come in gray, they come in black. Yeah. That's how new they are. They are so yeah. new. They're so new we didn't get our wrist strap and we didn't get our decal either for it. So yeah, they're, they're brand new. And so we, we had a few different colors. We didn't even get our black bodies in. So I said, well, we'll just have to bring them to the show with a gray one. Go with this and it, it is what it is, right? Right, that's right. Um, but we, we're, we're showing off its performance. Exactly. That's its biggest deal. And, and that's it's, the it's biggest so thing. far ahead of what's, what else is available. Manufacturers here, suggested retail price. Suggested retail price is $159.99. MAP is $149.99. Expect it to sell in the $145, $150 range. Okay. Yeah. So when can somebody expect to have these in their pro shops? Uh, they'll start shipping towards the end of February, beginning of March. Okay, so yeah. they're, once you get those other little things worked out there, you're good. We're literally just waiting on our supply Parts of to get the straps. There. Gotcha. To okay. Our decals apparently came in while we were gone. So okay, right so on. So just the just the wrist straps. Okay. Waiting on them. So you expect to see a lot of these out in the woods this year? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, you know what? And, and some people like the hook style. So. There well, you go. the the open hook style is is. It's really a very convenient way to get it on the string. It's, you know, with an index finger release, just having it connected all the time, it's, it, it marries your hand to it all the time. So being able to have the, the ability to just put it on when your query's coming in and be ready to go is a, really a nice, just, nice solution for all that. Excellent. Excellent. Any Thanks. questions you got over there? Well, I just thinking when you turn us on to these, of getting that form and getting that, that elbow, you always talked about the straightness. Right. Um, and, and with these, you're going to be able to get that same thing and, and getting into that straightness. It's, it's, it's gonna, it boils down to just good form. Yeah, well, yeah remember we were talking about yeah. the, the form. The form sets up your shot. If you can't be stable and have your body in a position where it's more or less in balance, using the least amount of muscle to stay in balance, you're going to forever shake and be... Right. really moving all over the place. But once you master that, now you got to execute the shot. And then the handhelds you got there, there's there's no movement in the trigger. You just apply a little pressure, and as you pull, everything changes ever so slightly, and it mm -hmm. fires. Right. So you know you get that subtle feel. In a typical index finger, trigger feel is is neglected. You know, you, you end up with the convenience aspect. How can I make right. this the most cost effectively versus how can I make this the highest performing product for my customer? So that's what we've been waiting to, to come up with. So we finally did it. Everything takes a little time, but this is really a you know, no trigger travel. You just apply pressure on it, and as you pull, it breaks. You, you think about a, the firearm industry. Uh, some of the companies out there, what separates them from one brand to another, they always talk about their barrel qualities and that, but they're all the same. Right. It's the trigger. It's the trigger, yeah. So you, you hear what people like better about one rifle over another, it's the trigger. Okay. You know, one, a, a good trigger makes the difference, always. And I noticed, and I noticed with this that once you fire it, 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 it springs back and it turns. It's, it's ready to go. Yeah. You don't have to, like, preload the trigger to... to Not really. Um, the action of it releasing and setting yeah. is so fast that it typically is. it's going it to get, but you always want to make sure you go to reset it because it could fire and sit like that, which is going to be more typical. So when you reset it, that's it. Always reset it. Just get in the habit of just squeezing on your trigger once and you're good to go. Yeah, and, and you had that right up on the mic and how quiet that is. Huh? How quiet it was when it fired. I mean, 
it, you know, like we talked about this in the field, you know, when we fire, yeah, you know, that sound compared it, to that one. It, I mean, this is so quiet. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's no, no noise, noise to it. It's yeah, difference in night and day, but hey, we're, we're using these on target range. Actually, I, I did I try use, these in the in mm-hmm. the field this year. I used my hunting. Yeah, I did too. He didn't hear it. You don't really, and and you know the the noise of you know when the hooks are open, the bow goes off. Yeah. You know we hear the noise when we're sitting here by ourselves, but sure. the, I don't think the deer are offended by the noise that puts oh, an no. arrow through them. No, no, they don't have time to think <laughs> about being offended. That's right, they're right there. <laughs> you know, they're thinking about how do I get out of here? Oh, wait a minute. Right. The air just got let out of my lungs. <laughs> right. We make them in black too. You know, an all blacked out version, but the, okay. You know the color. Well, I was worried about dropping these in the leaves. Okay. Exactly. That's. It's, I was it. I was in my blind, and it was like, and I liked that I could put it on my string, and that's where I left it. Yeah. But I was so afraid that if I dropped this thing out, in the woods, it's gone. Yeah, it's, it's gone. Like, yeah. But that I liked the bright color for that, and like I said, I held it. I had it on the, the D loop, and when, when I decided I wanted to shoot, I just picked up the bow and. It, it's funny you say that. I always I always put a nice pink piece of string on it. My my daughter has this pink string, so I I tie a pink string on it because when I drop it, which you always do, <laughs> right. Where is it? There it is. Well, right. <laughs> I, I I actually moved and and I had my bow laying in my lap, mm-hmm. and I I hit the spring, it came off and it fell and it landed on my stand. Made some noise, but I didn't have to go fishing for it. No. I was lucky. I was real lucky. But uh, yeah, I, we got to put some some string on these. I guess. I got to show you the our new Perfects. Okay. Uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's it's not a replacement for the Shoot Off mm-hmm. SX3. It's just another another mechanism. It's got adjustable finger sweeps. But we also have another feature on it in that when you, it's self-setting and set that you only have to cock it. You don't have to reach up and close the hook. Okay. But there's a, a flipper. So when you go put it on your D-loop, it's secure on there. You can gotcha. shake it and it won't fire. Okay. But you don't have to, you know, try and figure out how to do that when you're in the tree stand or it's dark. You just kind of, by feel, just slip it on and it stays there. Gotcha. So you guys got to make sure you come check that out. Well, definitely. We got to get down to the booth. Okay. Yeah. Twist my arm. Right, <laughs> twist, twist. Right, right. All right. Well, I tell you, appreciate you stopping by here for a hey, few minutes. Thanks Talk for having us. Talk to us and uh, showing us some cool new products. Always so, to see you guys. And as always, on a website, they can find it at? www.ishootastand.com. There you go. Get out there and take a look at it and get to your local dealers. They're going to be, like you said, Feb- late February, mid-February? End of February, beginning of March. Okay. So they, they ought to start hitting the dealer's shelves probably mid-March by the time shipping goes through and all that. Okay. And as he said... Don't forget that form. I tell you what, we're going to step outside right now, take our first break. We come back. We'll continue the podcast. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, What kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, second segment of the show. Sitting here in the ATA booth, here with PSE Archery. Got the big rig behind us. Danny hasn't managed to take off in it just yet. Right, exactly. You know, and that's the one thing. Um, uh, we talked to the driver. Yep. And he said, anything you want, just ask him. Except for the keys. Except for the keys. <laughs> so, you know, it's been, I tell you what, it is, it's getting into the afternoon here. And uh, we've already kind of walked around the place, kind of seeing what's going on. And it's busy. It is busy. But I don't know if it's as busy as it has been. It, it's a good busy. It's not. Yeah, it, it's kind of consistent. Yeah, it's not like wall to wall people can't move. I mean, we've been to some of these shows and yeah. it gets so packed that you can't even get down the aisle. So, right, exactly. So, I'm I'm excited to be in the PSE booth and uh, they had their awards today and um, Dan Yasa got Salesman of the Year. Yep, and we know him. And we know him, right? So. Um, no, it was cool. It was really nice seeing Dan get uh, get rewarded for his hard efforts and what he does for PSC and the amount of traveling he does and stopping in at shops. It seems like every other week he's in Michigan up by us, you know, making his travels up through the north country and, and uh, doing what he does. Right, exactly. And that's one of the things. It's just, it's just 
His knowledge, too. And not to mention the shooting. Yep, so. exactly. So, Well, I, Dan, we've got a chance to walk the floor just a little bit here. What what catches your eye or what have you noticed so far? What catches my eye? I mean, we haven't walked a whole well, lot. Well, uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex just caught my eye going by. Right. And uh, But other than that, you know, I really haven't been seeing anything jumping out at me yet. Except we did stop by gut check. Yep. And scent relief. relief. Yes. We did. We talked. How you know? If everybody heard the the podcast last week, Talk he joined Dean. the live live yep. on on Facebook, and so we stopped by and said, "Hey, we're Dan and Mike," and he knew who we were, and he explained everything to us behind each product. Right. Neat. Neat, and uh, it's something that I think we could all take in the field. You know the 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 scent relief. What a concept. It's, uh, for those of you who don't know, maybe weren't listening to last week's show, number one, shame on you for not listening. <laughs> Go back and check it out. But uh, seriously, though, uh, the strap, nope, I don't see it. There you, is that it? See? Oh, we're having to look for something here real quick. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Eric, is this it right here? No, that's ours. Okay. Okay. But, uh, yeah, you know. Getting back to being able to use in something like that, you know me, um, I like coffee. Yes. Well, I love coffee, especially Hunter's Blend Coffee. And we actually stopped and talked with them as well. They're here. But I take it in the field with me into the stand, and, well, you drink enough of it. What do you got to do? You got to go. You got to go. You need some relief. Yeah. And when I'm up in the stand, I mean, what, I don't. people are on different sides of the fence on this. Some people say, hey, I, I can pee in a, in a scrape, and it it, it helps to scrape. Other people say, no, I won't leave my urine out in the field because they're wanting to control all the scent as much as possible. Kind of like what I am. I mean, I'm kind of anal yeah, about you, it. Yeah, you, you are, and um, I tell you what. It, it, but when I'm in the stand, i got to go. You do, after three cups of coffee. Yeah, so what do you do? You know, you're sitting out, you know, maybe you're doing a, a long afternoon hunt, and you're out four or five hours in the stand. You drink half a thermos of coffee, you get into the, the last half of it, and nature calls well when you get to our age the nature calls you got to go it, it it hits you so what uh what they've done with scent relief it's a bottle and you use it you fill it and they've got a neutralizer that they put in it to neutralize the human odor right and uh, he he and he threw numbers at us that was like it, it you have the neutralizer it does this 90 percent this and that and there you go. It's just one of those things that, you know, then you add the scent. Yeah, it can side be a scent it. or a lure, a cover scent or a lure. Right. And they got um, three, like, uh, tarsal gland, uh, estrus. estrus. Then they go into, like, the apple, the pine, acorn. acorn yeah. And they got that. So, you know, you if, if you prefer not a deer scent lure or and you prefer a cover scent, there you go. So that's awesome. I, I, so it was you cool. Neut- you neutralize it, and then you pour in the cover scent or the attractant that you want. And basically, when you you pour it out, right, sixteen ounces. So that's pretty awesome. They uh, they got something going on there that's kind of neat. And and there's some other factors that's going to be playing in their whole concept of what they're doing about it being uh, human based urine. Yeah, and I think that's going to be probably CWD driven. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a disease-driven CWD TB, uh, yeah. And it, it's 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 the the fact that it's human-based urine kind of does a whole different thing going on out there. Right. Absolutely. So yeah. But anyways, it was great to to meet them, talk with them, talk to them on Facebook, and then got to meet the person behind the uh, the product. The product. And then he went on to gut check. Yeah, gut check. Uh, for those of you who weren't listening last week. It, uh, that is a wipe or an arrow wrap that will tell you if you've gut shot your deer. Literally, if you if you put the arrow through the guts of a deer, it will tell you that that's where you hit. He he showed us uh, one through uh, a, a good shot, double lung, red blood, or one and he had right next to it was one that was a gut shot and had the green slime, you know. Yep. And it it. The wrap told you it, it changes it, color. It changed color, stayed red for the blood. Actually, I think it turned blue, didn't it? Well, actually, it turned dark 
purplish. The, yeah, because the blood soaked into it. It got darker. Right. And then the gut one changed the color and told you, hey, you got a... So it's a great way of an indicator if, you, you know, if you've got a marginal shot. You know, do you need to back out? Give it some time. It, it just it helps you to know where your shot placement was by yep. the indication of, of what's on that wrap or that white. You can actually, if you don't want to put something a wrap on your arrow, if you're worried about weight and you're shooting longer distances at game, then you can use the wipe, retrieve your arrow, simply wipe the arrow with that wipe, and it'll do the same thing. And also, there's a, the second part of that with with these these wraps was the re reflectivity that right. he has on those and he, he has a box and he showed us with a light how bright they are so not only can it be reflective with a light flashlight when you're looking for it mm -hmm. but you can also he sells also the just a wrap that you can put a, a really reflective wrap on it right and he said you could fletch on top of that wrap just the reflective wrap. yep exactly so. so you know if you want something you like to you know i know uh out there, you've got lighted knocks and stuff, but if you want to put a wrap on that has a really, it's pretty nice and reflective. Yeah, absolutely. So, so. that was kind of cool talking with them. Absolutely. Uh, it, and that that's a brand, both of those brand new products, I believe, they're they, they debuted here. They were debuted here. He's, he's, yeah, he's literally, it will be coming out within a couple of months. So, you know, we talked with Eric, he's got a brand new release, brand new. I mean, like today was the first day it's been in the public view. And then we've got two products with uh, with uh, scent relief and, and gut check, same thing being debuted here. So you know, and that, that's also a good sign, is when you see people coming up with new ideas. Yeah, you know, throughout the hunting industry, you know, so many times we see things, products. They, yeah, they change. You know, there, there'll be new designs or make something better, uh, stronger, whatever, faster. But with this, these are completely new ideas which is, is pretty cool so. right and and we, the gentleman in in the scent relief uh one of the gentlemen he's been in the scent industry for 30 years yeah and talking to the owner Big of the name com company yeah and talking to the owner he says this guy if he didn't believe in the product he wouldn't be come over and work on it work with me on this yep. because you, especially in an industry like this once you get a bad rap or a snake oil salesman type Wrap. Yep. Yeah, you won't have a job in this industry long. Right. So, but awesome. Good things to see uh, coming out of a, a really a small company just starting. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, yeah, we're about nine, ten minutes in here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take our, our second break. When we come back, we'll continue a little bit of our coverage here at the ATA 2019 in Louisville, Kentucky. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back, third segment of the podcast, episode 499. 499. That means the next one's 500. That's the next one's 500. And uh, you know what, people? We're having so much fun. I think we're going to do 500 from down here. I think that's a good idea. We'll, we'll pop one tomorrow or Saturday and uh, kind of wrap up a, a few things here at ATA 2019. But, uh, you know, we had a question on, uh, on the feed here. Yeah. Benjamin, anything new from PSE? Yes. P PSE, actually, yes. <laughs> we got to see a couple new things today. We haven't got our hands on them and shot them yet. But uh, actually, they, they did a, a release of new hunting bows back in the first week of October. And we talked with Blake Shelby this morning, uh, Vice President of Marketing and Sales. And we talked about the Evoke 31 and 35. We haven't yep. got our hands on it yet and shot it, but we're going to get over to the shooting yeah, that's real where quick. Yeah, that's where we're heading next. So hopefully we get some video of that, too, that we'll be able to show you. Right, exactly. And um, you know what? It, it's, it's hard for me to envision them improving the Evolve cam system. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to, to see, see what's going on with it. Right, exactly. Yep. And, uh, and then that came out in October. Right. In June, they came out, or yeah, it was June, May, end of May, but uh, they came out with the, the 28. The 28, the Evolve 28. Yeah, and we had a video on that. We actually had uh, Dan Yasa, PSE, and Chris Schnur. Uh, one of the guys local there at, at one of the pro shops here, uh, local in Michigan, 
and we said and kind of did a roundtable talk of yeah the Evolve cam system and the, the Evolve series bows and kind of how that all evolved exactly and and unbeknownst to us they were headed for the, the evoke. evoke right so yeah it'd be interesting to see how those two uh those two bows uh we shot the 28 we're waiting to shoot the evoke um i tell you what the engineering that goes into these talking uh with bobby and and, and the engine the engineers that he works with is just an amazing thing that they go through and trust me it's a lot of trial and error too yeah, absolutely well it's something they actually just released here today and brought out was the new drive r 3b which is the long draw and then the drive r sd yes short draw short draw yes but with that being said we also uh blake was talking about how pete the owner of the company he's the owner of the company that still is involved in the engineering of it he shoots every day in he the factory in the factory every day or he goes out to vegas with his favorite tournament yep. and shoots but to, for a guy that owns the company that's still really hands-on, just like uh, Eric Springer, mm -hmm. hands-on, getting involved and still coming out with product, um, it'll be interesting. We're going to go shoot those, too, and see uh, how those shoot. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't know. We, we're not going to be able to shoot the SD. So, <laughs> <laughs> as short as our draw length is, right. we, we're too long of a draw for the SD. Amazingly, we are actually too long for a draw. I so, don't hear that very often. No. Wow. Awesome. So that's you know that's something that they, they built for you know small frame people, uh, short stature. Yes. <laughs> Shorter arm length and it, uh, youth. Yep. And it goes up to twenty five inches. Yep. So, you know, like PSC and what they've done and what they are learning to do and has learned to do, is they have something in the market in the field fits everybody. From yeah, it basically fits every everybody, and has a price range for everybody. You know, and don't quote me, but on the long draw, I, I believe that goes to thirty-two. Okay. I think it goes to thirty-two. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the case. So, on the we'll check bar. it out, and uh, we'll have to have Bobby run it down. Yeah, definitely. Well, and actually, we're gonna have Bobby on the show, or uh, on a live feed here. Probably, uh, we typically do those on the last day. We usually do them on the last day. If he's not doing anything, we might start to feed him in. Yeah. And kind of just get everything. Um, it's kind of hard to get them all done at one time, so I, I try to lead them on here a little bit. And right on. I got. To, actually, he made a bow that I can't fit into, which kind of is amazing. That you're too big for. Yeah, that I'm too big for. <laughs> Go figure. Right. <laughs> Go figure. Don't hear that too often. Right. Not at all. So, but um, yeah, have have you seen anything walking the floor or anything? What we haven't walked a lot, so have anything catch your eye? Not yet but I haven't stuck my nose in enough booths. Right, exactly. Yeah. We really haven't. Um, we've walked. Uh, we were here basically all morning long in the PSE booth. I guess, thinking about it, the the release that, that Eric just brought down. I mean, we literally walked back up into the booth getting ready to do the podcast, and all of a sudden Dan comes over and goes, oh, you got to talk to Eric. He, he's got this new release he wants to talk about. You know, and we got to see it. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's been out, actually out in the public today or not, or were we the first ones to get it out there? I don't know. It was released today, so that'd be no. So, you know? You know, do you, me personally, I don't know if I like the hook because I kind of liked using the the trigger one and being able to put it on my string. And let it hang? Yep. Can you close it and just let it hang? And then that way I can wear a glove or, or, or have my hand in my pocket and not worry about where my um, release is. Yeah. So, but I do know people that like to shoot the hook style. So, so you were shooting this with a glove on? Actually, I have. Okay. But bow hunting season, it was so warm. I didn't have a glove on at the time. Okay. Late season, when I was hunting late season, I I don't I like positive contact. And I know we're talking glove is thin. Dep well, it could well, be thick depending on thick. what you're wearing. But with me, I wanted skin on metal, and that's the way I hunted. I mean, right. It would let it hang on my bow. And my hand was in in a pocket or. You know, front, front you know, part of my uh, anything, hunting vest. Anything, um, I didn't get to the late season with my bow, but um, I, I te typically tend to wear just a cotton glove over my hand mm -hmm. um, that I'm going to be shooting with so I can hold that in my pocket and not worry about it. Okay. And then I'd have to try that. I haven't tried. I never got there. So. Okay. But I do like being able to hang it on my D-loop. So. Well, I guess other than that, uh, you know, I know... We were down at the Mossy Oak booth, 
and we got to talk to them a little bit. I didn't get around the corner yet, but they said there's some new products coming out for the yes. game, uh, through the Game Keepers program. Yep. So we're going to get down there, and we got to see some of that. Um, ran into a couple of good friends of ours here. We've seen the guys from Rut and River Podcast. They we were running did. around. I'm still waiting to see Carrie Z from uh, Huntfish Travel. Haven't seen her yet. And who else have we seen? Ian Sparks, who used to be on the Up North Journal here as well. He's He was cruising through and got to uh, see Brian Murphy from QDMA today, uh, this morning, right and early this morning before we came in. So, you know. I've seen Kip Adams roaming around here. Roaming around. I, he, I was going to point him out to you, but he was on a, a beeline. So he was stalking? Yeah, he was doing he was, a deer stalk. He was stalking straight, <laughs> straight away. So I was like, okay, I'll let him go. But uh, no, it's, it, it's good to see some. Uh, friendly phrases again and we only see them once a year yeah but it's like you haven't missed a beat right you know, and that's what i like about this show it's uh, it's a little more laid back it's not as crowded as from what we've heard like maybe over at harrisburg you know where it's an open public show right so this this gives you a little more laid back feel well uh, you've got buyers in here and you've got sales and you've yeah. got press and it's, it's, it's a good show to, to learn new stuff and see new stuff and, and innovation Absolutely. You know, we haven't been over towards Innovation Row, but, you know, it's always good to see that place, that corner packed up. Right. Because. And, and, and uh, some of these guys, that, like we say, we're talking like with Gut Check and, and Scent Relief and, and things like that nature. You know, it wasn't that long ago companies like that were in Innovation and they made the leap over. So Right. Exactly. So, you it's know, good. that's one of the things that it's, it's just I love this show. Absolutely. Got to get out. Got to get out and do some walking. Yeah. Right. So I don't know if we bring bring in any more live drops today or not. We'll have to wait and see and just see who kind of cruises through the booth here. Uh, we'll, but we definitely got to get over and shoot some bows. But I tell you what, let's step outside. Let's take our next break and we'll save uh, the last 15, 20 minutes for the last segment of the show. There you go. We're gonna step outside. And we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at pscarchery.com. Welcome back. Last segment. Last of the show. segment. Last segment of four ninety nine. I'm starting to get a frog in my throat here. That's I got, why I got, I got you to take a, a drink. You got to. You got to. You got to get some. You got to hydrate. You got to pound the, the vitamin C, and you got to get the hand sanitizer out. I do not want what we finally call the ATA crud. <laughs> right. Exactly. We don't want it. We don't want it. We don't need it. We don't need to take it home. No. So, so looking back at last night, what did you think about last night's event? Lincoln Rose says he still has us. All right. So that's good. Okay. Last night at the event. Got to go see Rodney At- Atkins. Yeah. Um, which part of the event you want to know? Uh, just your okay. overall opinion. Overall impression? Yeah. Um, of the night. Of the night. Uh, it was another, another good night. Uh, food out- was better, I thought, this time. Oh, yeah. OutTech did an outstanding job uh, getting food out. It didn't run out. Mm-hmm. Um I was shocked. I thought there would be more people there. Me too. I, I, it, I remember in the past shows that we've done there, uh, getting in line for it, and then when you get inside, it being kind of like shoulder-to-shoulder people and right. wall-to-wall. It wasn't like that this year, and um, I don't know what to contrib- contribute that to. So I've heard some people say that some of the vendors, or not vendors, some of the shops have done their buying early this year. I have heard that a couple of times. Uh, we've uh, talked to a few of them that they basically said, oh, yeah, we did it uh, early. Um, I'm done. So it's like, okay, you know, there's some that, that don't. But, yeah, I've heard that too. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't. It, I was expecting more people. What would you think about the concert? Rodney Atkins, he, he did a good job. He, uh, I, was, I was taken back by the fact that, and you got to know where I'm coming from with this. He's older than I thought he was. You know, I looked at that. And now that you mentioned it, I'm trying to remember, but I think you're right. You know, because what I, what I equate that to is, you know, listening to music on YouTube. Yeah. You know, watching, watching videos on YouTube. 
uh, and seeing things like that. I think it comes down to the fact that, you know, those are always there, and those like those songs he did were you know a few years back. Yeah, well, like and like said, like us, we we you go back and listen to some of the episodes from three or four years ago. You know, we were a lot younger then, right? <laughs> Obviously, and then he also and said. Now, uh, the one song was the most uh, requested song of the decade. Right, and you think decade? Okay, I'm so like, he, right? So we're talking That's like the nice. last ten, you, that song was ten years ago. And that, yeah. that kind of floored me the fact that that song was ten years ago. I think time's flying on us, dude. Kind I think of like we're podcast. getting old too. Yeah, yeah. I think we're getting old just like everybody else. Right, you exactly. Know? And you know, it, it's it's one of those things. But overall, uh, the show was not too bad. And um, it was over at a decent time. We were able to get back to the hotel, get checked in, and get a good night's sleep for this morning. Yeah, it. Uh, I had a good time. Liked the music. You know, a lot of good songs, and did some toe tapping. And yeah, there was a couple good songs, and uh, and uh, he he tried a new one out on everybody. Yeah. So everybody, I think, and liked it. They played a little old rock and roll too. They did a little teasing with old rock and roll. It was kind of cool hearing country twang and rock. Right. Kind of e- mixed each, a little. Each player of the band had, well, I think actually they played kind of like their home state song. Yeah. And uh, so that wasn't too bad. That was kind of fun listening to them do that. Uh, from uh, Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train. Aerosmith. Aerosmith. A uh, little Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's the first it, time I've heard Led Zeppelin done in country. Right? And I was <laughs> like, you know, I, I was like, yeah, this, yeah, okay, I I, I can kind of dig this, but right. it was, it's the first time. I mean, we went we went to a, a concert two years ago in Kalamazoo. You and I and, and, oh, yeah. and the ladies. We were pretty close for that, you know. Had had seating and everything, but this is the first time I've ever got to eat and you know drink some water, soda pop, whatever at the table, and then turn your chair on, sit and watch the concert in the open and kick back. Right, exactly. That was kind of one of the cool things. It was like, okay, we're done eating. Oh, just turn your chair around. Yeah, and watch the concert. concert. You know, and you and didn't we were, have to worry about... What were we, 100, 100 feet, 150 feet from them? Yeah, if that. You know? And it was like, it was cool. It was cool. You didn't have to worry about... Yeah, it had somebody walk in front of you, but you didn't have to worry about the crowd standing in front of you. Right. Now, that was kind of cool, so... But yeah, it was it was uh, that was neat. It was neat getting in here, getting it set up early. Um, the weather down here, going through Ohio, was a little interesting. It was, it was a little bit interesting. Um, the cold weather has arrived here. Uh, we heard on the news this morning about wearing their heavy jackets, and we laughed. And we laughed because <laughs> it was going to be in the 30s. Right, right. So. Well, you know, as far as hey, what's going on? Uh, as far as, as today goes and, and things that are coming tonight, you know, we got another event to go to tonight. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we're going to try to sneak over to Badlands. Yeah. To watch the festival again. Tomorrow's Badlands. Uh, we, we had a, a, a nice sit down today with uh, a, a person representing. A colleague. A colleague representing a couple of companies. And uh, we've dotted a few I's and crossed a few T's. And there'll be more about that coming when we get home. Right. Exactly. We're, we, we don't want to quite give everything away yet, but uh, we're going to start uh, working with a couple other companies. And let's just say one of them is from our home state. Yes, it is. And one of the, one of the things I, I see on our feedback, uh, Lincoln Roan is, is, is says you're old. Thanks, Link, Lincoln. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I know you're younger than I am, but you're not that much younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, you know what? Um, but yeah, we're gonna we, we're gonna hold off on. We're we're not doing any announcements here at the show. No, nope. we're gonna wait till after. Uh, we got a few things to take care of on a few other things. Speaking of Lincoln Rome, while we're here on the feed, when I mentioned Brian Murphy's name, this meeting him this morning from QDMA, he helps do some of the uh, the Deer Steward classes online. Right, okay. the Deer Steward one that I took and. He might be partaking in Deer Steward 2 that I hope to take this year. Don't know if I'm going to be able to make that, but I'm, I'm really hoping to be able to go to that. It's something that's kind of on my list. Um, but we asked them. We started talking about some of the things that they're doing for the state of Michigan, being advocates coming up and in, in representing uh, us Mich- Michigan deer hunters in front of the NRC and the, oh, and the okay. DNR and all that. Yeah. You know. And then, then he also, you know, and we thanked him for, for his service and doing it, him and Kip Adams both, but... He also mentioned that he'd like to come up and, and partake in some of the events. So, Lincoln, 
get on the horn and get oh get, Lincoln, yeah, get Brian Murphy to come up. And maybe there Kip, you go. Kip Adams as well. If, if Kip's going to be here, tell him to for the Deer Summit. Absolutely, having those two guys there. And I know the Deer Summit is in April, April ish. April Lincoln, I think, has got the final dates. I think uh, as I look on my calendar, right. Here, once I see the weekend, I think I can remember this. I think it's uh, the weekend of the 13th of April, if I'm not mistaken, or the 20th, one of those two. But uh, oh, see, see, now we're getting we're getting a uh, a message that we are now attacking Lincoln Roan. <laughs> we're hurting his feelings. Hurting I his think. feelings. Yeah. Well, he's still younger than us. But uh, if if, uh, if you're in Michigan. Uh, or if you're willing to travel to Michigan, you want to go to the Michigan Deer Summit, I'm telling you what, guys, it's an event that you need to go to. It's really uh, a good time, but we get some great speakers there. Actually, Wayne Sitton spoke there, I believe, two years ago. We missed it last year because of it was the ice storm. storm. Yeah. yeah. And they called us chickens. Uh, you know what? Um, but we're here talking today. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, we have to draw a line. Yeah, we didn't slide off in the road in the ditch somewhere and right, exactly. wither away. But, uh, but no, yeah. Uh, you know, and that's the other great thing about being here is, yeah, we see great products and things, but we see people that are working in habitat, working with uh, with our deer. The National Deer Alliance is here. Uh, the, Mule, uh, the Mule Deer Foundation is here as well. Yep. Uh, QDMA is well represented here, and it's nice to see people like that. They're being advocates for us. You know, they came up and helped us in those public meetings with the NRC. You know, for those guys to come out. And support us like that. That's that's what they're doing for us. Absolutely. And uh, Lincoln Road says the event is April thirteenth. Thirteenth. Okay, I was right. Two days before tax day. So I'll get in, get your tickets, and uh, we will be posting more about that later. We'll also yeah, probably. I assume we're going to have Lincoln on the show at we, some point. We we have got to have Lincoln on the show. Yep. So, but other than that, uh, looking forward to tonight. Good dinner tonight. Good dinner tonight. Another event good, we're going to go to. Good show. Um, I don't know who's playing. I have never. I heard. don't know. Have so no we'll uh, obviously we'll talk about in our 500th episode. Yep. And what we also want you guys to do, if there's anything here that you want us to go take a look at, make sure that you hit us up on our Facebook page, your Twitter page. If you've got our our phone number, which I'm not going to give out here publicly. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> you can text us um, or, or just shoot us an email. You know, yep. And we'll be glad to try to stop by and, and see some things. Uh, one place I want to get by, I want to go over and talk with Doug Roberts of Evercall. Oh yeah, we we, we tried I, to stop by but they weren't there. He's he's a local guy. He's in our back door. He is literally in our back door up the street. Fifteen miles from the house. Yeah. Maybe. So you know I did some work uh, with T V station. We went over and shot uh, we do our on the trail segment, you know, with Williams Gunsight. I that's what I do uh, as part of my yeah, job at exactly. the T V station. And Got to spend some time over at his place and seeing his operations there. I'm telling you what, phenomenal. Just a phenomenal outfit they got going over there. So we want to stop and talk with them. We, we talked with the guys from Hunter's Blend last night. Yeah. You actually were trying to kick him away from the table. You were trying to kick Mike uh, Schwarzenegger away from Be- the table. Because I was trying to save you a seat. No, I don't buy it. And he didn't buy it either. Well, it is what it is. They, I ended up <laughs> let, letting them sit down. So Yeah, that was pretty good, though. Last night uh, at, at the event we went to. I come up, I've got my food plate, and I'm getting ready to sit down, and, and I see somebody talking to Danny and asking, hey, is this seat taken? And you're like, yeah, we, we, we're taking these right here. And I'm like, dude, don't you know who that is? I didn't know who it was. I've never met him, it, except over the phone. Right, right. But uh, yeah, that was funny. So I had so, to give you a hard time. I know you do. That's fine. But, well, that, well, just like over in Mossy Oak, you needed, you needed to put a name to a face. You've right. talked to him forever on Online, right? Phone, yeah. My manager from Moss Oak for the gamekeeper staff, right? So, but you come to events like this, and you're able to put a name and a face together. So, exactly. So, it's pretty cool. Very cool. You look at look at Dan over there, just kind of scoping pacing out. The, he's pacing the floor. He is pacing. I don't know what's up with that. Right. So, so. but overall, the impressions here are pretty good. Uh, things things are rocking along. Uh, like I said, get us some you know, get us some names and some things you guys would like to see, and we'll we'll try to go by, take pictures, take photos, get you some information, and hopefully get them on the show. Uh, we're gonna get Dean from Dean Elliott, I believe. Dean Lance, Elliott from Gut Check and yep. Scent Relief. We're gonna have him on the podcast here, uh, maybe during the event here at ATA, but if not, we'll get him on the show at a later date and have him right. come on and talk about his product and showcase that exactly. So. so Thanks to PSE for letting us use our 8x8 eight eight square here. Absolutely. It's a pretty good spread. You guys see it here behind us. You can see the, 
Got the bows behind us there. The trailer. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of cool. nice backdrop. So definitely. definitely I tell you what. Nice well, backdrop. we're we're kind of running out of things here. I don't want to ramble on. No, let's not. But uh, episode four ninety nine. We want to thank everybody who listens to the podcast in the live stream. Uh, this is our one hundred ninety ninth live stream as well. So tomorrow or the next day, whenever we do episode five hundred, it'll also be our two hundredth live stream. There you go of the show. So without you guys and gals out there watching, emailing us, texting us, commenting back and forth. We couldn't make this, uh, no, this it, happen. So. And, and now that we've gone to Facebook Live and, and having interaction more with our, our, our viewers, it's just like last week, it was just awesome. So It was. We're talking about a product, and the guy comes on, starts talking to us about it, and then we see him here. Right, exactly. So, so it was all cool. That's pretty all good. cool. But uh, you guys stay tuned. We'll be bringing you more from ATA 2019 here from PSE Booth in Louisville, Kentucky. And that'll do it for this episode. 499. Of the Up North Journal podcast. Y'all take care. We'll be back again real soon. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Scent. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Game Calls. Twisted Minds Bowstrings. Hunters Blend Coffee. Antler Action. And family traditions tree stands. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.